and our vocation of priests and as pastor. We ask you now to turn in your Bible to Matthew 1. I think we have a reader. Sissy, are you reading today? Great. Here's one of our moms right now. Go right on up. That'll be great. We're turning to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. If this sounds like the Christmas story, that's because it is. And we're going to learn about the vocation of motherhood from one of the world's greatest moms, from Mary. So right now we turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, page 681 in your pew Bible. Is it on? The birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name of Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Lord with this phrase you see here on the screen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please share with me in a word of prayer as we prepare ourselves to study God's word. Father in heaven, we thank you for calling us into various positions of various vocations, various roles. We ask you, Lord, that we would respond to your holy callings, seeing that our daily roles are a way of you delivering care into the world, especially the care of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we simply ask you to open your scriptures to us. In Christ's name we pray it. Amen. So today we're going to be studying a mother's calling particularly. And around our church, in this Lutheran church, Missouri Synod, there's a lot of call days that are happening right now. A call day is a day when a pastor or here a vicar, Brennan, a friend of our family, here he is with his brand new wife. They're heading out on vicarage to serve in Florida. They received a, their a vicarage calling on call day. Here we see a bunch of pastors. These are called specific ministry pastors, pastors who are raised up to minister in one specific location. They're completing their numerous years of study and receiving calls from the church to go serve the church in special locations. This is their call day. We also here in Texas have a university that goes along with our church body. It's called Concordia University, Texas. It's right there in Austin. It's a beautiful campus. They raise up directors of Christian education, uh, deaconesses, teachers. And at this time of the year, those persons also have call days where they receive a calling from the Lord. It is a great time in our church to celebrate these things Yet, we have to be careful that we don't think that it's only people at Concordia's that receive a calling. Rather, a calling is something that all of us receive. And today, we're specifically going to focus on the calling of motherhood. So we're going to cover two main points here today. One, we want to talk about the vocation or the office of mother as it affects God's plan of salvation. And we want to talk about this same calling of motherhood as it affects our day today. So last week we talked about a calling that all of us share. We talked about the priesthood of all believers. We discussed this and then we gathered as a priesthood of all believers for a priestly assembly or a voters assembly. Here we hear about that priestly calling again as we read about it from Martin Luther. Please read the gold words aloud with me. But we are all priests before God if we are Christians for you must bend every effort to realize what God has done for you. Then let it be your chief work to proclaim this publicly and to call everyone into the light that is the light of the gospel. So in this church, you're all priests, according to the Bible, 
I'm a priest. We're all the priesthood, the priesthood of all believers. We share in this holy calling. Now, back in Luther's time, and I would say it's good for us today as well, all the different callings were assembled under three big headings. So you see here, there were the estates, and there are three big estates. The ecclesia, that is the estate of the church. We are the church here. We are gathered around God's word and sacrament. He has made us church. But we also have a calling of the government, uh, like you, our, our name would be politics, politia, the, the uh, ruling of our, our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, our states, and of course, our nation. And then there's what we would call economics, which is the, the estate of the household, the estate of the family. And it is out of this estate comes fatherhood and motherhood and uh, childhood and youth and siblings and all those callings that come from God. Today, we're focusing on the office of motherhood, the office of motherhood. And it has an essential part of God's plan of salvation. Again, we read from Scripture. This time, again, the gold words are for you to read out loud. We read from Moses' first book, Genesis chapter 3. I will put enmity between you, that is the devil, and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. It's also her seed, okay? That her seed, meaning that her offspring will come forth, and thousands of years later, his name will be Jesus. So from the very beginning, the promise of salvation came through the vocation of motherhood. Let's read again from Isaiah this time. Hundreds, if not thousands of years later, the promise of salvation still is associated with the calling of motherhood. You're the gold words. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. So hundreds of years after Eve came uh, the promise to the prophet Isaiah that there would be a savior, and it's still very closely associated with the calling of motherhood. So let's go to a Bible quiz. Here's our game show portion of our sermon. God's plan to send the Messiah, the savior of the world, into the world through what calling? Was it prophet, priest, king, mother, or all the above? What do you think? You can answer out loud if you'd like. All the above, okay, Josie said. So I heard of various answers. You're all right, okay? It's all part of the answer. Jesus served in the calling of prophet, priest, and king, but he came to that calling through the calling, through the vocation of motherhood, right? That's how Jesus came to be the Messiah of the world. So let's think of some of how this great promise of salvation was passed down. Think of some famous mothers of the Bible, and the Bible is just filled with significant mothers. Eve, she's the mother of us all, according to the Bible. Rebecca, Sarah, Rachel, they are the mothers of the patriarchs. The entire book of Genesis is built around these moms. Ruth, you'll recall, gave uh, birth to Obed, who in turn gave birth to Jesse, who in turn gave birth to David. And we have a whole book dedicated to mom Ruth, so we would know about how the promise of the Messiah was passed through the line or calling of motherhood. Hannah, who gave birth to the prophet Samuel and dedicated him to the service of the Lord. And then Bathsheba, you say, wow, yes, she is in the line of Jesus' family, and she was part of being the uh, motherhood, that vocation that brought us salvation in Christ. Can anyone else think of something else? Any other mothers that come to mind in the Bible? Mary, that's a good one. We're going to talk about her. Someone must have written this for me, I guess. They already knew the answer. Excellent. God's plan of salvation, as it follows the vocation of motherhood, starts in Eve, goes through the Old, Old Testament, is all kinds of lines of mothers that line up and finally come to fruition in the mother, Mary. Let's read about the calling of Mary into the office of mother. For what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So she is a mom. She's having a human baby, as human as any other human baby, but its conception is unique. This conception we're going to learn about comes in a unique way. Just like God said there should be light and there was light, 
So God hovered over, overshadowed Mary and spoke life into her. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. That son was Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the fulfillment of all those Old Testament passages that we talked about. So the extraordinary office of the Messiah, the Savior of the world, comes in with and under the very ordinary office of mother, the ordinary delivery. So this last Thursday in the church, does anyone recall what this last Thursday was a, a day in the church called? Ascension Day, the Himmelfahrt in German, the traveling from Jesus into heaven, into the Himmel. And uh, uh, this day is talking about how Jesus gloriously arose from the earth and went all the way back into heaven where he sits at the right hand of God the Father and rules and reigns for all eternity. So you would think that when Jesus came down to earth in the first point, he would come down in an extraordinary way as well. But he does not. He comes to us through the ordinary calling of motherhood. And we read about it. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So when we hear about the birth, it seems very simple, and she gave birth to a firstborn son, just the regular calling of motherhood. Yet the extraordinary happens in this birth that we have a Savior, the Savior, who is the anointed one, the Christ, who was the Lord of lords and King of kings and rules for all eternity, winning for us salvation, forgiveness, and life. We hear about this closely connected and glorified in John 1. And the Word became flesh among us. Let's try it again. And the Word became flesh among us. What miracle happened in the calling of motherhood? God came to earth through the vocation of motherhood. Let's not shrink this calling. God has a very high esteem for the office of motherhood, even using it as his entrance into the world for our salvation. Again, we read from Philippians, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Christ was the only child who chose to be born. He chose of his own will to come to us through the office of motherhood, and that office needs to be upheld even to this day. We will, after this servant, immediately go to the Apostles' Creed, and we'll confess this faith right here. Join me. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Sometimes we use a different creed, the Nicene Creed. There we say, he was for us and for our men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Where did that happen? In the office of motherhood. In the office of motherhood. In the birth of a baby, all this fabulous, miraculous theology occurred here on earth. Thanks be to God. Next week, we will be celebrating confirmation. And we will have six confirmands right here in front of us. And they have been learning their Old Testament and their New Testament. They have been learning their Luther small catechism. And they know this explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed, where uh, uh, Martin Luther tells us about who Jesus is. Join me. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. That's part of our Lutheran faith. That Mary is how Jesus entered the world for our salvation. It's equally as important as confessing that Jesus is God. We need to confess two things. Jesus is 100% God and 100% man, and he became man through the vocation of of motherhood. We read about this in this book called Call to Believe, Teach, and Confess. It teaches us about this. He did not descend from heaven with a body, right? We all know that. But he obtained one in the ordinary way as he grew in the womb of his mother. Isn't it a miraculous thing when we think about motherhood, how highly God has held this? How did this happen? How did this happen? Well, Luther goes on to give us his explanation that this is the first and last time in the history of the world where a woman was impregnated through her ear. As she heard the word of God, faith was created in her, and she began to be uh, conceived. Let's read Luther's words. The Latin is conceptio per orum, or conception through the ear. 
When she, Mary, comprehended the word and became pregnant in the heart through faith, she physically became pregnant as well. Isn't that interesting? What a unique calling she had, yet it's still the same calling as you mothers who we're celebrating here today have yet today. So motherhood is not only the way in which we receive God on earth, it's not only the way in which our Savior came to us, but it's also used as a model of salvation. Jesus talks about our salvation as a birth. Remember Jesus had a visitor, his name was Nicodemus. He came to Jesus in the dark of the night and they had this very important conversation. And Jesus said these words, you're the gold words. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you seeing the connection with born again and motherhood? That we are born twice. We are born physically through our moms and right here, is the delivery system for the rebirth. Here is another place where people are delivered, now delivered not physically into the world, but delivered from sin, death, and the devil, and faith is created in their heart, and they are saved. They are born twice over. We all have been born. Who does this make our mother? This makes our mother also the church. So we have my mom, Elsa Kringle, who lives up there in Henderson, Tennessee, and I also had the mother who is the church who gave me birth through the sacrament of holy baptism. You also have two mothers. Let's read about it again in John. Again, Jesus. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, that is baptism, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So when it comes to explaining our salvation, Jesus himself turns to who? Mothers. He turns to the calling of motherhood to explain what it is to be reborn. So do you think we have a calling on what the vocation of motherhood is and how it played out in salvation? I hope we feel like we have a little idea what it's like. What about motherhood today? Has anyone seen this movie with Tina Fey? These two moms, this is a new example of motherhood today. I don't think you'd find this in the Old Testament. One mom here, Tina Fey, could not quite have a child. She did not have a husband evil, but she was able to uh, go and rent a womb, if you will. She rents this woman, and she's going to have this woman artificially impregnated for her. This character in the movie, okay, uh, Baby Mama, I think is the name of the movie. This character is very serious about being a mother. She's so excited. This character over here, not so serious. Just take a second. And moms, think about what she's doing. What are those? Those are not glasses, by the way. It's a comedy. Motherhood today is really marketed very broadly. Do any of you ladies get these magazines? Mother and Baby Magazine, Working Mom Magazine. And if you start to read the covers, there is a lot going on in the minds of moms. There are plenty of magazines that focus and uh, market themselves to mom. Natural Child Magazine, Cookie Magazine, and they're about being, not just being a mom, but being a smooth mom, being a good looking mom, being a stylish mom, having the newest, coolest gadgets mom. Just think, I remember as a kid going in the grocery store to Piggly Wiggly in one of those. We got stuck wherever we happened to get stuck in the cart, and I don't remember anyone ever talking about safety whatsoever. It never really occurred to us. Okay, now you get a Cadillac when you're a kid, and you go. You see how this is a mothers go to the stores where the Cadillacs are. Why do they have these? So that they get these. These, give them these, okay? Do you see the correlation? What about car seats? Does anyone, look how motherhood and marketing to moms has changed. When I was a kid, not even, before I was, this is my brother's car seat right here. He's three years younger than me. Okay, just a few straps, and pretty much we weren't sure if it was buckled into the car or not. Kind of just dropped in there. If we remembered it at all, usually we just snapped them in the front seat. Usually in the front seat, because that's where mom and dad were, and the little kid needed to be up there to be safe, we thought. This was the seatbelt, right, everyone? You remember that? That was the seatbelt, right? 
And now, holy cow, what's this gizmo here? Looks like we're going to outer space. It's amazing what's happening. This is all focusing on moms and making sure moms know not so much about their vocation. What are we thinking about mom as? As not a calling, but a consumer. Right? You remember all that stuff we just read in the Bible and Martin Luther and the creeds and all that? I don't remember hearing mom being a consumer. But here's one of my favorite books, The Trillion Dollar Mom. I don't happen to be a mom, and I'd like to be able to communicate with moms. And this book talks to you about how to present yourself to moms. And why is it called The Trillion Dollar Mom? Because it's a trillion dollar marketplace that moms represent. That's why. There's a whole series of books. Here's Power Moms. It goes on and on. There's a whole library full of books. How to approach mothers as consumers. But we can't be both. We need to figure out at least which one's the higher priority. Being a called mom or a consumer mom. Well, the Bible's very clear that it believes motherhood to be a calling. God mothers to bring life into the world. It is amazing to see the time-lapse photography of a child gestating. We can see it in real time today. We can even see it sped up. It's amazing what goes on in the development of a child. We can see the miracle before our eyes. Women, did you realize that we didn't even know there was something called an ovum until 1837? We didn't even know that women participated in the birth of a child uh, biologically until 1837. Wow. But the Bible knew. The Bible knew, and it told us right here, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God is saying that he creates not just a physical person, but he puts the soul together with the body in the vocation of mother. That's where that happens. We call this traducianism. Traducianism is the belief that soul and body start and are formed together in mom. We read about it. The belief that the soul is traduced or propagated naturally by the parents. What a miracle motherhood is. She is the starting place of the soul. Now, you're not going to hear that in your high school biology class, are you? But the Bible's making it clear to us. Again, we hear that motherhood should be honored because of all the things that we have discussed so far. There is a fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. And the large catechism says it very clearly. Do not imagine that the parental office is a matter of your pleasure and whim. Let me just go back. Weren't we talking about moms being consumers or called persons? And if you take on motherhood as a consumer, you might be thinking about your child as something just for your pleasure. Has anyone seen these people who dress up their little bitty kids in princess outfits and parade them around in beauty contests? Who's really doing that? Isn't it mom using the child for her pleasure? Who's the little dad who's got the little boy who's putting in all this football gear when he's two years old or something like that? He wants him to be the next star football player and sends him to all kinds of expensive camps and all these things when he's just a little bitty toddler, can barely hold his head up with a football helmet on it because his neck's not strong enough, okay? That is not for the benefit of the child. That is not handling parenthood as a called person, but that is a consumer. That's for my pleasure I'm doing that. Well, Luther says, not so fast. Let's read it again. Do not imagine that the parental office is a matter of your pleasure and whim. It is a strict commandment and injunction who hold, of God who holds you accountable for it. God has called us to be parents, and we need to take it seriously as a calling. Again, Luther, let all people know that it is their chief duty at the risk of losing divine grace, first to bring up their children in the fear and the knowledge of God. What is parenthood? What is motherhood? It's about serving God. It's about serving God and his kingdom and his will, not our own pleasure. Finally, again, Luther. It is our duty before the world to show gratitude for the kindness and for all the good things we have received from our parents. Today is a great day. It's Mother's Day. And mothers, please hear us say thank Thank you to you. Thank you for taking up your calling. Thank God for you. Thank God for sending us the Savior through the vocation of motherhood. And thank God 
for his continued sustenance through this important office yet today. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to you. Amen. Let's stand for a word of prayer. We pray. Dear Lord in heaven, you have explained to us in the scriptures miracle after miracle. And we are the kind of people who go 